Republican Congresswoman Tom Price of Georgia. By the way, he's a Gingrich supporter, but we're going to talk about the State of the Union. He's chair of the House Republican Policy Committee. Congressman, thanks for coming on this morning. morning. All right. Great to it's be with this. you. Thank you. You, you got it. It's the standard question. Members of the loyal opposition get asked about President's State of the Union. What did you like in what you heard? Well, I think that the president uh, appropriately bracketed his speech uh, with commending the troops. So he started with the military, ended with the military, and that was the unifying uh, feature. In between there, in the middle two-thirds, it was basically a campaign speech. You didn't hear about the, uh, the, the, the incredible elephant, if you will, in the room, which is the uh, amount of spending here in Washington, the, the, the debt and the deficit being massive under this administration, and not a word uh, that I heard uh, addressing uh, fixing that, which is what we've got to do in order to get our economy uh, back on track and, and help the hardworking American taxpayer. Well, you, uh, you say you didn't hear anything uh, on the day. I think the White House would say one of the reason, one of their reasons to push this Buffett rule, if you will, is in order to, what they would argue, to accomplish tax reform in a way that could also help with the deficit, you got to reconfigure some of the tax codes. So let me ask you specifically. Sure. 30% basically uh, an alternative minimum tax, if you will, for multimillionaires. Uh, what do you think of it? Well, if you want to uh, disincentivize job creation, then you can certainly do that. If you want to disincentivize investing in our economy and expanding our economy, then, then you can do that. Uh, the problem that's not being talked about is that, is that the tax rate that Warren Buffett pays is the capital gains tax. So if, if you increase that to 30 percent, which apparently is what the president uh, wants to do, then we will decrease job creation, decrease job formation, decrease the vitality in the economy. And all that does is, is further erode uh, the confidence in this economy and make it so that he's going to drive more jobs offshore, not bring them to, to America. So there are wonderful positive solutions. The House Republicans have passed tens of jobs bills that, are, that now sit idle in the, in the Senate. I had hoped that the president would recognize at least one of those and call on the Senate, call on Harry Reid to pass them and, and get it to his desk so that he could sign it. But that's not what we heard last night. But what do you say to this fairness issue? I mean, why, why should, you know, we've seen, you know, Mitt Romney is turning into the face of this, fair or unfair, but his tax return came out this week, and he's, it's an example we can uh, look to fairly easily. He pays at a, a lower than a 15% rate because it's all investment dividend sure. uh, income, and, and he's following the law, but is it fair that, you know, his income now is all derived from old investments? Well, look, and Chuck, he doesn't have any wages and salary. So let me let me ask you this: Is it fair that his income is taxed at a lower rate than, frankly, yours, mine, a lot of people who work on Capitol Hill? Let's just use those folks as examples. No, the, the, the money that actually is utilized to invest in those things from which one derives capital gains, that money's already been taxed. So one could argue that the capital gains tax is actually a, 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 a double tax. Uh, but the real issue is how, do we, how are we going to turn this economy around? How are we going to get investment to increase? How are we going to get the banks moving again? And you don't do that by imp imposing more regulations and more rules from Washington on the folks that have got to get this economy rolling. Uh, President Obama's answer last night was what is... It, it always is, and that is that Washington knows best. We'll decide for you. We'll figure yeah. out whether a bank sought a loan money. We'll figure out whether you can get a student loan. We'll figure out uh, whether or not you can create jobs in, the, in this country. We'll pick the winners and losers. Right. That's not the way to get this economy rolling. Well, let me ask Chuck, you, you know that. Let me ask the three specific reforms. You sort of were alluding to them. So let's start with the uh, home refinancing. And given the difficulty that many homeowners have had of getting a loan, how, you know, if the banks aren't going to do this, then at some point, don't you have to uh, have government needs to step in and, and tell them, no, you've got to do this for people that have good credit. They do it now for the government. And he signed the executive order to deal with government-backed mortgages. But sure. how else are you going to get these banks to move? Well, two points. One, that, that, that's one of the big problems that's occurring right now is that the government through the FDIC is actually telling banks not to loan money. They're, they're, they're picking who can get money. Uh, that's wrong. Two, one of the big reasons we, we found ourselves in this housing crisis is, is because of the Community Reinvestment Act and other rules where the government was telling banks exactly who they could loan money to and who they must loan money to. So the last thing we need to do is to go back to the situation where the government is picking who can get a loan as opposed to the marketplace. Uh, there wonderful positive ways to solve this if you believe in economic freedom and you believe in equal opportunity as opposed to equal outcomes, which is what the president clearly believes in because right. he wants to pick those winners and losers.
Let me ask you about the idea that they have of trying to disincentivize, quote, outsourcing uh, to incentivize companies to, quote, insource, meaning to bring factories, sure. bring some uh, stuff here. It would mean government, though, sort of, of, of closing some tax loopholes that uh, reward them for shipping some jobs overseas. What about d uh, dealing with legislation like that? Well, we're all for closing loopholes. In fact, our budget last spring closed virtually all of the loopholes. We were for closing the loopholes before closing the loopholes was, was cool. But the last <laughs> thing you do is, it, it, it want to do is to put the, the federal government in charge of, of business decisions. That's what the challenge that we had with the National Labor Relations Board and, and Boeing, for example. And the, the same thing can be said for whether or not businesses uh, locate here in the United States. But you got to get to the root cause of the problem. Why don't businesses create more jobs here in the United States as opposed to elsewhere and it's it's the taxation level the president alluded to it we need to lower the corporate tax rates here it's the uh, regulatory oppression the president talked about it but in fact his administration has put in place more regulations and is more oppressive to business and then it's the liability issue the thing uh, the lawsuit abuse in this country and the president addressed that last year in his state of the union I was yeah. hoping that we would hear about it this year in fact we didn't which means it clearly is not a priority of the president well let me just ask you very quickly Tax reform, isn't this impossible to get done in an election year? I mean, look, this is a case where both sides say, oh, the other, other side's playing politics. In an election year, I mean, it, it, am I being too cynical here? It's not going to happen? Well, I, I hope it does happen uh, because we, we've got the highest business tax rate in the industrialized world. There's no reason from a tax standpoint why businesses would expand. We've got over uh, nearly $5 trillion of U.S. money sitting offshore in U.S. companies that have made that money overseas, and we punish them for bringing that money home. And then the individual tax rates are higher than they ought to be. And if we want to get this economy jump-started, those are the kinds of things. Reducing those tax rates so that we can increase the vitality in the economy. See, I hope that, that the president will be receptive to that discussion. Well, Congressman, this is the irony. I hear the similar rhetoric from their side. They all, everybody agrees, seemed on, okay, got to lower individual rates. The disagreement comes with, okay, how do you... How do you deal with some things having to do with the wealthiest? And that seems to be where there's the sticking point. Fair enough? Well, I, I, it may be fair enough, but we put a proposal on the table. Let's get a response. Let's have this discussion. That's what the American people want us to do here in Washington. Have the debate. Have the discussion. Then let's yeah. move forward with legislation and put forward positive policy instead of just spitting and right. shouting at each other. Tom Price, Republican from Georgia, head of the Policy Committee on the House side. Congressman, thanks for coming on this morning. Thanks so much, Chuck. Appreciate it.